Hello, 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 welcome back to Hunter Tuned. Today, I kinda wanted to show you my uh, home garage that uh, we've been working on for the last like month uh, since we moved into my new house. Uh, I just kinda wanted to show you the garage now that it's finally finished. Um, yeah, so without further ado, I'm gonna kinda give you a little tour of what we all did. Uh, we did insulate the entire garage um, and then we also installed a bunch of new outlets. So the garage only had like two outlets in it before and it had two light bulbs that worked. So now we have, uh, you know, insulation and we also have drywall all along the ceilings and the walls. And uh, yeah, we also installed that uh, Big Max Mr. Heater, which works awesome. Um, I'm definitely a mechanic. I'm not a carpenter by any means. But I did have some friends that came over and some buddies with some tools. And uh, yeah, we just kind of chucked it up and it looks great, honestly. Like, I'll show you guys a little bit of a before picture of what this garage looked like before. So there's a little picture on my cell phone of what the garage looked like prior. And this is an updated picture that I just took. And by the way, Merry Christmas to everybody. Hopefully you all had a great Christmas. I know I did, spending it with friends and family. Um, and hanging drywall. So we did get this all finished up. Uh, I actually just finished the last couple pieces today I did run out of drywall though, so I did not get to finish uh, this section here, but uh, whatever Honestly, this is a thousand times better than it was prior um, And we definitely were learning a ton when we were hanging the drywall pri Previously we started over here. We didn't you know split our seams or anything like that uh, we just kind of chucked it up and then like on the ceiling we definitely messed up a ton and then we kind of figured it out here where we drew a line and had a, a fresh edge to work off of but the problem with this garage is when we were hanging the drywall is the trusses on the ceiling were not 24 inches apart or whatever it's supposed to be eight feet apart they were not eight feet apart um so it wasn't we weren't able to just put the eight you know the sheets up we had to actually cut them you know to size on all of them so we weren't you know able to keep a factory edge on a lot of it and you know whatever but it's a garage it's not like a house so I, I didn't really care if it was like super professionally done I just wanted to save money and realistically I have about a thousand dollars total into everything you see in this garage with the drywall the insulation and the heater. So I spent about $700 on the drywall and insulation and then I spent about, eh, I might have like eleven dollars or $1,200 actually total, but I did get a heater on Black Friday. That heater over there is $375 bucks. and then I got a bunch of like little LED shop lights from Menards. So these LED shop lights we put in uh, the outlets on the ceiling. We did put some outlets up top here and yeah, I put five of them in. I put uh, four cheaper ones. So these ones are like 15 bucks a piece all along the sides here. And then the center one was 40 bucks, but it's also a stereo. So this thing has a Bluetooth speaker built in. So I have no need for like a boom box out here or like a radio on a shelf taking up space. It all, I can just stream right from my phone to the shop light. And it honestly works really good guys. Like the, the quality, and the uh, sound is plenty in here, especially with the insulation and drywall now. It doesn't take much to really crank out some tunes. So yeah, and then we actually finalized the heater. Uh, we got the thermostat ran. We got the vent plumbed through the drywall. Um, on it, we got a carbon monoxide detector here. Uh, thermostat, I've got a fire extinguisher hung up. And yeah, honestly, super happy. Everything turned out really well. Took about us took about a month of doing it here and there, and just kind of you know nights with a couple buddies drinking beer. Uh, that's really all it took. Uh, but it definitely was a lot of work. But yeah, I, I don't really want to do this again in the future, but I may, uh, just because I've been kind of dreaming of having everything in one place. I mean, you guys know that we just bought the house here, and I've been renting my shop that I currently have. I would really love to have all my shit in one place you know what i mean so like i could have my dyno my lift everything kind of close to home um that would be like a dream come true but it's definitely kind of a stretch that i'm trying to do but it's it's just something i have to play uh smart economically just because i don't want to go out and spend 10 times more money 
or whatever just to have something close to home uh, but it is a little bit of annoying uh, thing to have to drive you know an hour to my shop every day um, it's just you know one of them things that's it's getting old now that I've moved um, but it is what it is I'm, I'm trying to do the best and obviously I think productivity and everything like that would also go up had I had a shop closer to home and you guys know if you guys watched the uh, first house video when we posted about that that I wanted to there's actually a shop directly across the street from my house but I don't think that one's gonna be up for rent anytime soon and there's one for sale like right next door to my house but the one for sale it's been for sale for like 10 or 15 years now and the guy just is he's asking too much money it's just overpriced and it's kind of a dump but I was thinking about possibly maybe going and checking out the phone number like today or tomorrow and seeing if I can just call him and see if he's willing to work something out because I mean sometimes when guys have stuff sit for that long they're willing to just work with anybody that's willing to work with them so I'm hoping that may be the case but if it is the case I may be having to do more stuff like this and carpentry work because that shop like I said is super run down but um, I think like I said it'd be really cool to just kind of have all my stuff in one place where I wouldn't have to run back and forth all the time and I mean shit I got my Duramax earlier this year like six months ago and I've already put like 25,000 miles on that truck it's crazy like I've been I just drive all the freaking time and I burn a lot of fuel and like I said it just be it'd be awesome to just have all my stuff kind of close to home where I think productivity would go up everything would just kind of be you know a little bit better, a little bit less stressful, get to spend more time with my family and spend more time, you know, at home. And, you know, if I want to take a little five minute break, I can run home, eat some dinner, and then go back to the shop. Where now, like my current shop, I don't have like a bathroom. I don't have, um, you know, any gas stations nearby. It's like a 10 minute drive for me to go from my shop to a gas station. So it's, you know, kind of sucks, but then again, I'm also blessed because it's out in the country enough where I can have the chassis dyno, you know, and that. But if I did get a shop around here, it'd definitely be tough with the dyno considering how loud the dyno is and how loud cars are on the chassis dyno. But yeah, that's just like, it's it's been tough, but it's something I'm really trying to work towards and brainstorm ideas that are smart and, you know, it, I don't know. I think it's going to be my New Year's resolution of what I, I want to get accomplished for next year. Because I want to have all my stuff in one place. <laughs> if that makes sense. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, this is the garage, guys. It's looking awesome. Uh, the other day, I actually went out and I got a couple little toys for myself. And I bought a new snowmobile because I live in Wisconsin. It snows, you know, every other year. We get a bunch of snow. And then sometimes we don't get any snow. But it looks like we're gonna get some snow this year. And I went out to Metro Motorcycles in Menasha, Wisconsin, and they got this sled on a trade. And I picked it up for a really good price. Um, and I can't wait to ride it. It's a 2010 Articat uh, Firecat 800 Snow Pro. And uh, yeah, can't wait to ride it. It's honestly the nicest snowmobile I've ever owned. Uh, I picked this one up earlier this year, kind of like in the middle of summer. Uh, just for a fixer-upper that I'm gonna run. It's a 2003 Yamaha RX-1, but I have two sleds now, so me and my girlfriend go snowmobiling this year. Super excited about that. And uh, this one, I just need to get the carbs cleaned up. It runs great, but uh, as soon as you go over half throttle, she, she tends to bog. It doesn't wanna clean out, uh, so I'm assuming it just has like clogged main jets or something like that, or possibly like a dead fuel pump, because it has two separate fuel pumps. It's got one pump for two carbs and another pump for the other two carbs. So, and they replaced one of them, but they didn't replace the other. And the only other thing too with that sled is it has a little bit of cl uh, clutch rattle. So like when you, when you throttle it really hard, the clutch engages, it tends to rattle, which is a common Yamaha thing I've been told, but it's still something that I might address uh, depending on how big of an issue it is. I may just run it, I'm not sure. And then uh, my dad gave me this four wheeler uh, to just have around the house. Uh, to use for a snow plow because you know plowing our driveway or sidewalks I'll probably do my neighbors sidewalks and driveways think about maybe picking up a couple little accounts around my place uh, just to make a couple of extra bucks here in the winter uh, but I did just put a snow plow on it and I got to figure out a winch situation with it so like the winch just currently runs over the bumper to the 
to the plow system and the winch is super tired like this winch is old it's been just rusty weathered and it's really slow to pull this freaking plow up so i have a brand new winch actually at my shop but i don't know how i'm going to be able to mount it and stuff um so that's another thing another little project of mine that i've been doing um and then I also picked up this little pit bike. Um, I've been wanting to get one of these little things for a while just to have in my trailer for going to the racetrack. And this is like one of them SSR, it's an SSR 125 pit bike. It's got a clutch um, and it's a four speed. It's just a little pit bike. They're freaking awesome. They're actually pretty quick for what they are. And uh, you can pop woolies all day long. If you guys followed for a long time, you guys probably remember my Grom that I had. I had a Honda Grom that I sold and I, Kind of regret selling that bike because it was a fun like all around fun bike you could you can honestly go like take it off road you could do wheelies around the street you could ride it wherever you want um where this thing's kind of just like maybe play around at the racetrack or run around the pits with uh it was super cheap so i mean it is what it is i just kind of wanted it because my buddy has a pit bike track in his backyard and i'm like i gotta get one so i picked up this thing and uh super excited to go ride it Maybe do a little bit of modifications on it. Not exactly sure yet what we're going to do. Um, yeah, and then the rest of this video, I'm going to take you out to the shop and show you a clip from out there where we were... I was just kind of brainstorming ideas with the new Mustang, and I have uh, some ideas. The engine and transmission are going to be done soon, so I just want to show you the clip that I filmed the other day out at the shop uh, with the, for the new Mustang. And maybe get your input on that. And that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you guys have a great Christmas. And uh, hopefully see you soon on the Sloppy Radio Show, which we're going to be filming tomorrow night. So be sure to watch out for that on the Sloppy Mechanics YouTube page. And uh, yeah, today I'm going to kind of show you uh, around the new SN95 Mustang a little bit and talk a little bit about some things that are concerning to me and kind of what I want to do and where I want to go from here because... You guys have been watching the last couple videos. You see that we got our short block all assembled and I'm going to be having the heads back probably today or tomorrow. Um, tomorrow's Christmas Eve. It might probably wait till after the holidays, but the engine is pretty much ready to go and I have virtually everything here, uh, but the next step of the process is going to be the car itself and getting it ready to, you know, take the motor and do everything with it. So. The car itself uh, does not have a roll cage in it, and my buddy Adam Ritchie, if you guys know, he brought his Willys Jeep in, and we tuned the Willys Jeep here on the dyno not too long ago, and uh, we might be doing some horse trading back and forth um, to get his Willys turbocharged and to get my Mustang a roll cage. So he has a little fabrication shop that I may take the car to, and um, we're gonna kinda do some stuff to it, but Kind of wanted to get your guys' input on what you think on a lot of this stuff and where we should go from here. So, yeah, let's get right into it. But, quick thing right before we do is um, I'm super humbled to be offered the, uh, I guess, experience to... I'm actually having a radio show with Matt Happel from Sloppy Mechanics and A21 Bravo from uh, here close... Uh, well, that didn't come out right. <laughs> and Ryan from A21 Bravo, as well as possibly Jack Roberts from the YouTube channel Squirrel Tuned. Um, if you guys have any questions for us to talk about during the radio show, uh, please drop them down in the comments. There's already a ton of comments and questions on Matt's little video that he posted. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, we're gonna talk about our eight second rides that we built in the past uh, on a budget and kind of just answer questions if you guys have any. So uh, be, it's gonna be a really cool thing and. Uh, I'm really honored to be able to have a radio show with Matt and uh, just be able to have that experience. So within the next like week or so, we're going to be uh, filming that little radio show and I'm really excited to get your guys' input on it and see what you guys think. So here is the Mustang. I actually put it on the hoist for the first time ever since I bought the car. I probably bought this car about six months ago. And uh, yeah, really haven't touched it. It's been sitting in the shop just kind of collecting dust. Um, and I put a mock-up engine in here just to kind of see how everything's gonna fit because the car came with LS motor mounts when I bought it. And uh, the motor mounts and everything, uh, fit the engine fits very well in the um, 
car and in the engine bay. I'm pretty happy with the position of it and everything like that, but we are gonna be making quite a bit of horsepower with this car. I wanna be comparable to the Chevstang, maybe a smidge bit faster than the Chevstang was, but with a cleaner car. So that's kind of why I got this thing and um, that's what I wanna do with it. So I'm unsure what I wanna do with like a mid plate or an engine plate, if we should do an engine plate or not. Uh, the Chevstang never had an engine plate. Um, and I know a lot of guys don't have engine plates. Some guys do have them. I don't really know what the real benefit of it is, if I should do it, if I shouldn't do it. I already got the accessory drive for the engine, so if we did put an engine plate on it, I may have to change up my accessories uh, that I already got for this car and stuff like that. So I don't know if it's really needed or if we if we should not do it or if we should do it. I'm not really sure. You know, if, if we try to build, you know, say an 850 car, that's kind of what I'm going for is go eight, it, you know, have the car ready to go 850s. Uh, that's kind of the goal. Um, another thing we had talked about uh, with Adam is possibly doing a tube front end on the car because as you guys can see, it is, you know, still like all factory, everything in the engine bay here. And uh, it still has like the ABS module sitting in here, which, you know, we're gonna ditch, uh, throw that junk out. And, you know, a tube front end is pretty much just gonna cut the car off at the strut towers and then just run tubes to hold the fenders and, you know, bumper and stuff like that and all that, you know, it's gonna clear up a lot more room in the engine bay, which I do like the idea of, uh, and I'm not opposed to doing a tube front end, but I just don't know about the mid plate if it's needed, or not mid plate, but the engine plate, or mid plate, or any plate really. I don't know if uh, it's, it's worth doing or not. All right, anyways, where I left off, uh, I'm not really sure where I left off actually, I got a phone call. But uh, anyways, yeah, so I gotta ditch a lot of the factory stuff, and uh, we wanna do possibly a tube front end on the car, just to have some more space uh, under the hood, and put a roll cage in it. So. To do that, I have to take out the interior, which I already took out the seats that I had in here. And, um, you know, taking out the interior shouldn't be too big of a deal, uh, but it is all factory stuff yet, and I don't really want to um, overcomplicate this car, considering it's gonna be a race car. And the way I wired up the Chevstang was uh, pretty much I gutted the entire car, like all of it, and I left the plugs for the brake lights, tail lights, headlights, and uh, just wired those two switches to turn them on, and that was it. Uh, that's kind of all I did. I didn't really overcomplicate it. I didn't have anything else running the car other than switched power and constant power for like the Holly, the ECU, which this car will also be on a Holly Terminator. And uh, that's just kind of what I want to do with this car is I don't want to overcomplicate it, and I just want to keep it simple because it's going to be a race car. Um, you know, maybe I'll keep the heat, but I highly doubt it. Um, and just because these cars run with like a vacuum operated system for like the climate control, um, unless I can just like wedge it, uh, you know, with an on and off switch to turn on, you know, the the blower motor, or I just get one of them plug-in uh, cigarette lighter heaters uh, instead. I don't know what I want to do. Um, like I said, this thing's going to be a drag car. It's going to be a race car. It's still driving on the street, but uh, it's not going to. I don't want to have it overcomplicated. So right now. It's overcomplicated in my opinion. So on top of everything still being intact, uh, you know, under the dash and everything like that is one thing. Uh, it still has all the factory stuff, which I'd like to keep the factory dash in the car, but mount a Holly seven inch uh, dash, you know, where the stock cluster is. I'd like to do that and then maybe utilize some of the switches and stuff that this car had, you know, under the cons or under this little, uh, flap right here where there was cup holders or whatever at one point uh, I can maybe put some of my switches right here and then cover it up when I'm not using them can utilize that uh, the guy that I got it from I already put a shifter in here kind of what I want to do is I want to take the dash and all the interior out so we have a clean slate to start on a roll cage and once we have the cage and everything in I just want to use the outer shell of the dash I don't want to have anything really behind it I want to gut as much weight out of it as I can behind the dash and just rip literally everything out of this car. I wanna just start over. Um, I've already ripped out the fuel tank today because I put the car on the hoist and kinda of crawled under it. And uh, I took the factory fuel tank out of it and it still had, here I'll just show you. It's got all the factory stuff underneath yet. All right, so now that the car is up in the air, I wanted to show you a little bit more. 
of what it's got going on. This car has a pretty decent suspension setup already. Uh, it's got, you know, Team Z front K member, and then it's got supposedly a built 8.8. .8. Uh, it's got a full spool or at least a mini spool in it right now, because if I turn one tire, they both spin at the same time. And I was told that it has uh, 410 gears and, you know, axle shafts and stuff already in it. So that's cool. Um, but it still has like rear sway bar on it, which, um, I always ditch and I put an anti-roll bar instead. So I would like to put an anti-roll bar on this car uh, to attach to the rear end that keeps it from, you know, moving side to side like this. Keeps it straight so when you launch the car it doesn't, uh, you know, torque the front left up really hard or anything like that. It just kind of keeps it straight going down the road. Um, and then it has drag bags in it which is super old school but, you know, they might work. I don't know. Might keep them in there, might ditch them, not exactly sure. And then it's got strange single adjustable shocks all the way around with a strange single adjustable and coilover in the front from Maximum Motorsports, camber plates, all that's already in the car. Um, then it's got uh, adjustable uh, lower arms here and upper arms. And they're all solid bushing already, so that's cool, but they never welded the tubes on the rear end, so I probably gotta do that go around and uh, just weld the axle tubes into the diff housing. Just so when you launch a car real hard, it doesn't twist the, you know, axle tube housing into the, you know, differential housing there, because the Cavalier actually did that. And then when that happens, the drive shaft goes and smacks the floor. So like I said, I ripped, I ripped out the gas tank today, so no gas tank in it. And it's got this like vacuum line hanging back here. I don't know what it's for. And it goes up into this, uh, I don't know if this is like a relief thing for nitrous uh, system or something, but all that stuff's probably gotta go. Um, it still has like factory fuel lines all through it. Uh, like the factory fuel filter's still there. All these, all these hard lines are all factory, like the brake lines and all that stuff, which if I don't have to mess with the brake lines too much, I'd like to just utilize what's here. Uh, I just, I don't know, it's, it's just a bit, uh, you know, overwhelming to see right now, but I'm really hoping this all comes together soon. I just gotta figure out, like I said, brake lines, an anti-roll bar, and fuel lines and stuff back here. But where the spare tire well is, uh, is where obviously the factory fuel tank was, but this car is gonna run a fuel cell and possibly an intercooler tank. So I gotta figure out where I wanna mount that stuff and how big of a tank I wanna buy and what I wanna all use and still be able to fit it all in the trunk which I might pop the trunk here in a minute and show you guys what I'm talking about. Uh, car already has these uh, subframe connectors which are welded on. Super nice uh, job that they did on these. So it's got the subframe connectors all the way through. Uh, none of this stuff is welded. Like the uh, transmission cross member uh, plates here. Uh, my Fox body, I actually started tearing this out of the body. So what I would did it is I went through and I welded all the you know seams because these are just kind of spot welded on the, into place and I just kind of went around and ran a bead around all that and then same with the back where like the upper control arms are the upper torque boxes and the lower torque boxes I kind of just went through and welded all of them solid which none of this car none of this uh, this car doesn't have any of that done so I might have to go through and do that and then this is the front suspension on the car it has uh, team ZK member control arms all that stuff all spherical bushings uh, it's got super nice brakes on it. And then here is that ABS module. It has like the line lock and everything set up already, but I don't know if I want to utilize any of this because I'm not going to use an ABS module. If I'm going to use ABS for anything, which this does have like reluctor rings on it, on the front wheels, so I could uh, put track control on the car eventually maybe. But like all the factor, like I said, all this ball of wiring that's sitting up here, like what, what the heck am I gonna do with any of this? You know, just take it all out. Like what is this little box? I have no idea what that box is. Like and more random plugs just kind of hanging out, chilling everywhere. Like I don't know what any of that stuff does. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna need it. Cause like I said, this is gonna be a race car and I feel like it might be easier to just rip all of it out and then start over. So that's kind of my plan at this moment. I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do yet. And I still have to get a radiator for the car. I don't have a radiator for it yet. Um, and I'm debating on what one to buy. So, I don't know, like I said, if we're gonna do a tube front end, 
I don't know where it's gonna fit. How, I, don't, I don't I don't know. I, I'm a little bit like overwhelmed because I want to do a good job on this car and make it nice and clean and tidy, but at the same time, like I don't want to overcomplicate it and do unnecessary stuff that isn't even gonna be utilized. So yeah, here's just another bunch of wiring that's doing who knows what. I don't know. So here's the trunk of the car. Um, it has, it looks like there was a battery back here, but there's only a ground. So there's no power uh, coming back to here right now, just the ground. So I gotta figure out that. And like I said, I don't know if I wanna like cut the back of the car out here to mount the fuel cell because this is like a circle for a spare tire. It's not really meant for a fuel cell. So if I cut a nice square and I can kind of flush mount it, uh, that might be a good thing to do. I'm not sure what I wanna do. It's just, I'm kind of cringing when it thinks of cutting this car up, but it's kind of what you gotta do sometimes. So I want it to look like this, but not have all the functions behind the dash that's not gonna be utilized. Like I said, just kind of simplify everything. It makes it easier, makes it simpler, and it makes it work better, in my opinion. You don't have to chase your tail a hundred different routes. You know, if I use the factory wiring to trigger the holly, or I use the factory wiring to, you know, utilize the starter signal and all that kind of stuff, like, I, I'm, I'm okay with doing that stuff, but using, like, take all of it out and just find the pin outs on the back of the ignition, with, what, uh, what does what kind of thing. I'd rather do that than try to turn the key and then find out what harness is where to find out where the power is for that and like I said I feel like I just maybe start over and that's kind of what I want to do. And you got my transmission bell housing all welded up. Uh, my buddy came down and we welded up a couple of cracks on this SFI bell housing which was kind of weird uh, to even have a cracked SFI housing but it was cracked and uh, they, the previous owner had like repaired it with like JB Weld, which I don't know why the hell you would try to do that, but um, yeah, so we had to go in and just fill in. It cracked all along where the mating face is to the, to the housing because this piece is super thick and this piece is super thick, but in the seam here underneath is really thin, like where they meet together is really thin, so that's kind of where it cracked. And I don't know why it did or whatnot, but yeah. So this is a Turbo 400 that's gonna go in the car. It's got a hipster brake and uh, yeah, just rebuilt, uh, ready to go. And then we do little things to these transmissions like jet the converter feed on the, on the pump uh, just so you don't kill the thrust bearings and stuff in the motor. Uh, it's just, it works out better uh, on turbo cars to do that. So yeah, maybe drop some ideas down in the comments, guys, of what you think we should do with the car and how we should tackle it. Uh, what the best plan of attack is and if you guys have built an SN95 or a new edge Mustang and you have like a build thread somewhere that uh, I can maybe check out and pick your brains on um, I'd love to do that so just for the car itself like I know how to put the motor together and you know tune it and stuff like that but you know when it comes down to the car I get impatient a lot and I just start I break out the sawzall and this car I don't really want to do that with but at the same time I want to keep it simple and uh, not overcomplicated so yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed the little video here um be on the lookout for the sloppy radio show coming soon and uh have a great night and a better tomorrow we'll see you later